stood behind me on this building in Hackney Wick in Stratford, London, is one of O2's highest capacity Nokia configuration sites with six sector low band LTE 800 and LTE 900 in addition to their high band flagship configuration with 44R L18, L21, 88R L23 as well as standard N78, 88R 5G. Really an amazing configuration but needed for such a busy area as this is with all the Stratford retail and this kind of residential and mixed business area that we're in currently. <laughs> to provide this high-end broadcast capability, this site features numerous high-end Comscope antennas, with dual beam panels being used to create the six sector LTE 800 and LTE 900, and then 24 port antennas carrying other bands like for example the 88R2300 and 88R N78 as well as the 1800 and 2100 for example. <laughs> Up next we're going to explore some of the other strategies that O2 have deployed to keep their network operating successfully in busy places like central London. On the subject of high-end O2 macro sites, the City of London is the place to go with a number of the locations being really top of the range Huawei 46S or in other words 44R across six sectors and this is deployed on 1800, 2100 and 2300 megahertz 4G and actually a lot of these sites also have 5G as well. In this case this one has massive MIMO 5G on 3500 megahertz but nonetheless the standout for me is that six sectors of 44R high band 4G which performs absolutely excellently. It's not just fun macro sites in London however. O2 have extensive densification strategies using microcells and small cells as well. If we just turn to look over here onto this post there is a Nokia small cell and there are just absolutely tons of these around London especially in the central areas. These Nokia small cells are absolutely everywhere. There are two, in fact, right behind me. Now, these come in all different shapes and sizes with various different configurations. The ones behind me are directional L18, but there are also many that are omnidirectional to serve all around the place. And while these are L18 only, there are also ones that have L18 and L21 as well. In fact, many of these small cell poles also host free Wi-Fi for additional capacity as well, with the APs being identifiable from their much thinner antennas compared to the um, omnidirectional type small cells or just different shape compared to the directional ones. O2 small cells are located on a wide range of different structures as well. They're not just on poles like this, they can be mounted on the top of BT telephone boxes all mounted in shops such as the case of the spider cloud small cells. Indeed many O2 stores have solutions for them including my local store in Belfast which has a Nokia 5G in building small cell system. The microcells come in a wide range of different styles usually being mounted on building facades and walls. They come in solution all the way up to four boxes, which typically emit up to U09 plus L08 plus L18 plus L21. Just before I catch my train and say goodbye, I just remembered that there are some even more tightly beamed sites than the examples that I've covered today. These examples use five beam Comscope antennas to fire five beams in close proximity to each other to provide a very high capacity density. However, the amount of spectrum deployed on these sites is relatively low and hence why the overall capacity they deliver is not all that high, even if the amount of capacity they provide for the megahertz deployed is. So to summarize, O2's capacity management approach is ultimately having lots of cells through a combination of highly sexualized sites with lots of bands and then tons of small cells. And on that note, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Sorry it's been a bit quick, but 
today was predominantly a social visit to London, not a kind of masked visit. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I hope to see you on the next one.